And now a clip from the desk of the apostle. the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry raw and uncut productions For the people of God and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be used by the Lord to better minister to you even as the Lord is ministering to me now there's some things that are going to be added to the ministry so I'm being used by the Lord to uh, uh, make you uh, privy to that right now to share with you just so you know let's get into well it. the lord said unto me recently it's time to do some serious teaching it's time to up the ante so to speak it's time to be used by the holy ghost as he raises the standard a lot of people have been taken out of this world by the spirit of death the angel of death, the demon named Samael. He has taken a lot of souls out of the earth realm by sending demons that work for him, spirits of sickness, spirits of murder, spirits of suicide, you know, all these other spirits that also contribute to a, 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 a human body being brought to the brink of death. Spirit, the spirit of schizophrenia, the spirit of depression, even in some cases the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of envy, the spirit, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of not wanting to be alone. So there's a lot of murders going on within families. Uh, also the love of money is causing that as well as murders right in families, in homes, possessions, material things, the love of money. A lot of people, when they die, God said, are just being thrown in heaven. Let him explain that. What the Lord means is this. According to a lot of people, Hell is empty. <laughs> but that's not true. A lot of ministers have lost the focus and the purpose of ministry. It is our responsibility, those of us that are called and chosen, it is our responsibility to warn people so that they don't go to hell. That's what the term being saved means. When you are saved, you're saved from the coming wrath of God. You're saved from the tribulation and the things that the earth is going to experience during that time. You are saved from hell and death has no power over you when you are a believer in and of and on Jesus Christ 
people live any way they want to. Robbing, killing, stealing, murdering, committing suicide, doing all manner of things to leave this world. The cares of this world and the loss of fortune and inheritance and money can cause a person to think that if they, if they kill themselves, that they'll be in a better place. There are people who commit heinous crimes, and they assume, because the devil tells them this, that it's better that you take your own life than to face the time in jail. My brothers and my sisters, that is pure error. You ever heard of the term, out of the frying pan into the fire? Mm. Well, if you live a life contrary to the word of God, if you live a life pleasing to you and not God, then what will happen is when you leave this world, if you're still in that state, you will not be saved from the coming wrath. You won't be. It is time that those of us, again, said the Lord, that are called and chosen, start letting God use us to teach and preach this and to come before him in the ways according to this. To approach his sheep according to this. It is time to let God prepare us for things that are coming that are good that the Lord want to impart unto his people. But you can't receive any of that without preparation. Preparation. Lord, help me to do right. Preparation. You know, some of you know that there's a strong teaching anointing on my life, and but right now the Lord is not leading me, and I'm trying to not pick up the word and get into it. Even though there are some scriptures the Lord is going to use me to throw out there to put on the table for you. But this, this talk, this colloquy is not about teaching and preaching, but it's to inform you which way the ministry is going. So as you see the changes, you've been told. We are going to utilize other platforms besides television and besides fake book. And I call it that because there's a lot of people on Facebook who are professing to be called and chosen, yet are not. But because that platform is open to any and everyone, then a person can do like they do in the army. They can get up there and be all that they want to be. And the bad part is there's people that are unlearned concerning the things of God, and you don't know the difference, some people don't know the difference between talking in a holy tongue and chanting. And there's a lot of people on Facebook chanting, not speaking in holy tongues, but chanting, which is why they don't receive change in their life. It, it makes no sense to declare and decree things that you cannot fulfill. Because the only one, according to the word of God, who can declare and decree anything is the God of heaven. No man, no woman, no witch, no fortune teller, no psychic, no hex thrower has the 
power. No psychic, no medium, no palm reader, no root worker. It don't matter how many people get on television or a fake book and make all these advertisements telling you, I can help you get out of debt. That is a lie. You'll never get out of debt. As long as you're living in this world, you will have debt. If you have light, gas, rent, mortgage, car note, insurance, phone bill, cell phone bill, you will have debt. And insurance, life insurance. You can't forget that. Because when you leave this world, you have to be buried. The best thing to learn to do is to ask God to show you how to manage the resources that he blesses you to have so that though in this life and this world you're in debt, you'll be able to manage things. That's important. Very important. It's time to stop falling for the okie doke it's time. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, men, when you go before God to worship, to pray, to make supplication, to approach the throne of grace, uncover your head. If you have on a hat, take it off. If you have anything covering the very top of the cranium, Take it off. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5, sisters, if you are going to God in worship or prayer or making supplication, just approaching his throne, if your head is uncovered, cover. If you have a prayer shawl, put it on. If you have a bonnet, a hat, a scarf, a towel, anything, put it on. Because according to scripture, you cannot rightfully come to God un, or should I say, not lined up. Does that mean God won't hear you, brother? If you go before him with your head covered with a hat or something on, it, it doesn't mean that he won't hear you. But what it means is that the enemy can also say things to you. And if you're not lined up according to the word of God, according to the ordinance that the Lord makes available for us to understand, read about, and to know, then you will, will be halfway right, halfway lined up, and the devil will have opportunity to trick you. You'll hear things and think it's coming from God, and it won't be. Sisters, does that mean if your head is not covered, that God won't hear you when you pray? It's not what that means. He'll still hear you. But when he responds, how will you know if it's him or not if you're not lined up like he said to be lined up? Okay, some say, well, I, my mother is in ministry or my aunt or grandmother. Or I don't see world-renowned women in ministry covering their head. Why should I? Don't worry about that. You're accountable to God for you. Which brings me to another point. Oh, well, thank you, Lord. God said to throw this in there. First Corinthians 11, verse 4, brothers, it says praying and prophesying. Prophesying means to speak for the Lord under divine influence, under divine inspiration, under the anointing. But you have to be careful what you say, especially if you say, saying, thus saith the Lord. Because if it doesn't come from God and you lying on God, he's going to deal with you. 
Deuteronomy chapter 18. Read that when you get a chance. Sisters, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 5, again it says, praying and prophesying. Which also means speaking the word of the Lord, speaking for the Lord, speaking the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, speaking on behalf of the Godhead. You don't want to tell people the Bible says stuff that it don't say. Because then you're lying on God. And you might think, well, nothing happened to me so far. Well, <laughs> there come a time for everything. You sow to the spirit, you reap from the spirit. You sow to the flesh, you reap from the flesh. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Now, the Lord said that it's not a sin to not know something, but it's a sin to not try to get to know. That's called the sin of ignorance. It is very important because you don't want to leave this world and not go to heaven. You don't want to lead people away from God while you're in this earth realm handling this. A lot of people get into ministry for denarii, for money, for mammon. Mammon in the Greek means money. It don't mean nothing else but money. There's people that get in ministry for that reason. And they make pray, P-R-E-Y, and profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, of the people that listen to them that may be searching for the truth. The Holy Ghost is saying, it's time to let God prepare you for a real walk with God. It's time to grow. This demon of coronavirus has been running rampant. Rampant all through nations. Taking people out. The world has put together intelligent minds, if you will, have put together many different kinds of vaccines. And now there's problems with that. Now, the Lord said to make you aware of this. Some people are saying, well, we're living in the days of revelation. They're mentioning words like chip. They're mentioning things like buying and selling. Listen, don't listen to that because that is not true. Yes, it's true as written in scripture, but we're not there now. How do we know? There's certain things in scripture dealing with those times in era, E-R-A. One of them is the Antichrist. He will appear and make himself out to be God. So it would seem. Sitting in the, on the throne in Jerusalem. That has not happened yet. Sure, there's many antichrists running around. Yes. The antichrist is an epithet of Satan, meaning that's one of Satan's nicknames, the Antichrist. The Antichrist is empowered by Satan. Just like the false prophet is empowered by Satan. And in the book of Revelation, the false prophet and the Antichrist are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And Satan will also too, but they're going to go first. Death and hell will also be thrown into the lake of fire after giving up the dead that are in them. Again, it's time for some teaching and preaching. The ministry is going to be dealing with 
a series on death, on hell, on heaven, on salvation, subjects that are in scripture for you to learn, <laughs> for you to study on, for all of us to know. We need to know these things. God said that as he prepare his people to come out of this season of pandemic, when you come out, those that make it out, when you come out, saith the Lord, you shall worship and serve God in the way that his word says to do. It's time right now to choose this day, this day, who you will serve. Muhammad cannot get you to heaven. Charles Taze Russell cannot get you to heaven. Mary Baker Eddy cannot get you to heaven. Ellen G. White cannot get you to heaven. Your denomination cannot get you to heaven. It don't matter how big the denomination is. It don't matter. It could be Kojic. It could be Baptist. It could be Holiness, Methodist. None of that. None of that. Mennonites. None of that. Amish. None of that. Catholicism. Surely none of that. No denomination can get you to heaven. There's only one way to get to heaven, and that's through Jesus. He's the open door. He's the gate. And if you don't go through him, then you will not make it to heaven. You don't want to leave this world and not be a part of the first resurrection. When the Lord comes back to get his children, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that are alive will be caught up with them in the clouds and be taken away. To have that marriage feast, that wedding feast in heaven after the Lord sits upon the beam of judgment seat and the saved folk get their reward. There's a lot of people that's not making it to heaven. They think they are. There's people that are lying, stealing, killing, selling drugs, cussing every other word, doing all kind of backbiting, uh, 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 causing dissension and division and tearing down ministries and speaking against the Holy Ghost and cursing Jesus Christ, calling him anathema. There's so many things that's going on in this world. Politicians thinking that they're running the world and making all kind of decisions that's affecting the people and yet not affecting them. But then there's all manner of corruption going on in the political arena. Then you have things like the big tech, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, that are just trying to silence the people of God. From speaking. The Lord said to say prophets, and prophetesses, it's time to get on post. The Lord is putting it in my spirit to say that there's no such thing as a prophet or prophetess who is not concerned about national things. If you do know that there's a prophetic anointing on your life, and yet you are not concerned about natural thi uh, uh, national things, excuse me, you need to go sit down and get prepared because you can't carry or be in the office and not perform the responsibility that goes along with it. Apostles, brother apostles, 
There's people that claim they are apostles, but don't know what apostles are. Don't have a clue. Calling themselves apostles, yet have no power. And then trying to build a ministry on a sign by using hirelings and those that they plant in the ministry to make them look great. Oh, go stand over there and I will show you the power of God, said they. That's witchcraft. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. It's not in scripture. Sure, the Lord breathed on the disciples and he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. But as far as that, and knocking people down, and not, oh, no, it's witchcraft. Get away from that. Even those who try to make you think the more money you have, the more blessed you are. And that, that material gain is godliness. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, withdraw thyself from them. I said I wasn't going near the Bible. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost said, pick it up. And I have to do what he says. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse, the Lord says, start of verse 3. If any man teach otherwise, other than this, but you have to know what this says in order to know if they're teaching otherwise. If you don't spend no time with God and study and read and, and make some time in your day for the Lord, the day that he gave you, then you won't know if anyone is preaching contrary to this or along with it. You won't know. And there's a lot of people that say, well, I read my Bible. I know what my Bible say. You have not read the Bible from cover to cover. Stop lying. Stop. There's so many people deceived. The spirit of deception is also running wild in this season and time. The Lord told Paul to write, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, not your bishop, not the one you call in your apostle, you have put yourself under the, the rulership and the thumb of these people, and they are leading you the way they want to lead you when you don't belong to them. If you're a Christian, I'm not talking to the unsaved right now, but to the Christian. If you are a Christian, you belong to Jesus Christ. So the words that you need to hear, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness the scripture says from such withdraw thyself withdraw thyself prayer warriors with your prophets and prophetesses as well it's time to get on point See, because while the world and the politicians and all of these agencies and people are trying to find a way to get free from this spirit of coronavirus, the only way to get rid of a demon is to cast him out. 
But if you don't know how, then you might as well sit down. Because you can't mess with a demon and think that that demon has no power. Doesn't go that way. There's a lot of people that have died recently, yes. And while a lot of people are saying, they're in heaven, rock the heavens, they even have the nerve to look up. I'll be up there to meet you soon, like their Fred Sanford or something. No. If a person left this world not born again, they are not in heaven. Jesus said <laughs> to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. So I don't want you to blame me for saying this. Because there's a lot of people that, that just stepped on some people's toes. Because some people have lost loved ones. And know what they're saying? My loved one is in heaven. They're in a better place. They're not suffering with cancer no more. They're not suffering with the coronavirus no more. They're not suffering from leukemia or anything like that no more. They are in a better place. How do you know? How do you know? I hear God telling me to share something with you. But first, let me read this. He said, read this too. John chapter 3 verse 1 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him Rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily. That means this is very, very important, Nicodemus. You got to get this. So do you. So do I. I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, and of the spirit. So let's pause for a minute because there's a lot of denominations, even the apostolic faith, that I'm talking about the real apostolic faith, the hardcore ones that that uh, are Jesus only. I'm not talking about these ones that just use the word apostolic because it sounds deep and holy because it's not. That word is, is, is not. But those are the hardcore apostolic faith that tell you you got to go down in the water in Jesus' name. That's true. It is true. It, it is true. It is true. And they also say to you that when you go down, that's how you become saved. That's not true. Ephesians 2 will tell you that. That's not true. And then they say when you go down in the water and you come up, we'll tarry with you. So you get filled with the Holy Ghost and start speaking in other tongues. That's not true either. Not in the sense that they're using it. Because can't no man or woman or cow or dog or cat or nothing, no teacher, no professor, no dean, no one can teach you how to speak in an unlearned tongue. It's just that. It's an unlearned tongue. And if you can't speak in an unlearned tongue, you sure cannot write it. And I'm sorry, I got to bust y'all bubble. Some people, a lot of people say, oh, Shondo. That's not a Hebrew word. That's not a, even a holy word. That word don't even exist. And, and if it did, you can't throw it into the holy language because, again, it's an unlearned word. Stop playing follow the lead. Water baptism does not save you. John 1 and 12 says, To as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. But as many as received him, John 
1 and 12, King James Version. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's how you get saved. Accept, accept, A-C-C-E-P-T. Accept Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the hammer, the rock, the chief cornerstone. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. That's all it takes. It's that simple. And some say, I read my Bible all the time. In John chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus said, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So you can't learn about Jesus Christ without this. How are you going to accept someone you don't even know? We can't do it. We can't do it. When Jesus said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Spirit there is with a capital S, meaning the Holy Ghost. But let's deal with this word water right here. This is symbolic of something. And someone. In John chapter 15, verse, let's start at verse 1. We're only going to read three verses. Verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch, verse 2, in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now verse 3 says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The word is the cleansing agent. The word washes you. And what is the truth? The truth is that your faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Your faith grows by the word of God. It can't grow no other way. This is another word of God through Jesus Christ. Street and Outreach Ministry. Raw and uncut productions. This was another clip from the desk of the Apostle. Join us again another time for another clip. God bless you. And thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.